1985, America was feeling the first effects of a seismic shift in the way consumers dealt with their finances. Stock markets were in the early stages of unprecedented gains and consumers increasingly were faced with taking a greater role in preparing for their financial future. In our profession, personal financial planning was growing to meet their needs. Before 1985, the CFP certification was essentially an educational designation. So in Denver on July 17, 1985, a defining day for us, we established the International Board of Standards and Practices for Certified Financial Planners. In 1994, the organization was renamed Certified Financial Planner Board of Standards, or CFP Board. The organization would establish high standards of ethics and practice. It would add a disciplinary and legally enforceable element to oversee those who earn the Certified Financial Planner certification. During our first 25 years, CFP Board has exceeded expectations. We set the standards for excellence in personal financial planning, and we established the CFP certification as the credential of choice for professional financial planners. We've experienced many changes over the years, but there's been one constant. That's our focus on benefiting the public. We provide the public with a meaningful way to identify competent, ethical, and professional financial planners, and we uphold the four E's of certification, including education, examination, experience, and ethics. And we actively enforce these standards, giving the public real confidence in the credibility of CFP certification. We've made important decisions that have raised the standards of the profession, such as the adoption of a fiduciary standard for financial planning services. But the promise of CFP Board has always gone beyond its setting and enforcing of standards. When you combine the public's need for qualified, professional, personal finance advice with the client-centered focus of the financial planning profession, and add to that the public focus of CFP Board's mission, you have a compelling message that needs to be heard. It became obvious that we needed greater engagement with public policy to fulfill our mission. That led CFP Board to move to Washington, D.C. to become more involved with important public policy issues that could impact CFP certification, the CFP certificate community, and the public that we serve. In the short time since CFP Board moved to the nation's capital, we quickly reached out to legislators, policymakers, and other associations dedicated to consumer advocacy and shared with them our deep concern for consumer issues. We were successful in the major financial reform legislation that recently passed Congress in achieving the first significant step toward the regulation and recognition of financial planning as a profession. The Government Accountability Office is required to conduct a study on the need for the regulation of financial planners and to report back to Congress with recommendations on how it should be structured. We will be working to secure a comprehensive study and to use that to continue to advocate for competency and ethical standards for the profession. Because of our efforts, we are now recognized by many as a true advocate for the consumer and are well positioned to advocate for stronger government regulations that put the public's interest first. Looking ahead, we'll continue to set CFP professionals apart from the rest of the financial services industry through the high standards of the CFP certification. We will continue to seek out ways to bring the benefits of financial planning to larger segments of our society. We will not rest until we achieve our vision of a profession that is held to the highest standards of competence and ethical behavior yesterday, today, and tomorrow. <laughs>